Hi, John with eTrailer. Look, you deserve a great flat towing experience, and today we have the components here that are gonna do that for you. We have a 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 Z71, so that's gonna be the four x four package. We have a motor coach here that has air brakes on it, and we're gonna take a look, quick overview of some of the components that's required to get it, this Chevy to flat tow behind the coach. First things first, we're gonna look at the physical connection here. This is gonna be our tow bar, and this links up the Chevy with the motor coach here. Uh, second thing you're gonna need is gonna be a supplemental braking system of some sort. Now our coach has air brakes, so this is an air brake system. We also have systems for hydraulic or electric brakes. Third thing you need is gonna be safety cables. Now in this instance here, this is a brand new Nighthawk uh, tow bar. It comes with the safety cables. So when you're looking at stuff like that, keep that in mind. Fourth thing you need, you're gonna need some sort of diode wiring. This is gonna transmit the signals like turn signals, tail lights, and brake lights from the back of your coach to the back of your Chevy. And the fifth thing you're gonna need is the base plate. That's gonna be the physical connection that we actually attach to the front of the Chevy that hooks up to the tow bar to make all of this possible. Now, additionally, on these Silverados, to be able to flat tow, you need one more component that uh, not all vehicles need, but this one does, and that's gonna be a battery disconnect switch that mounts under the hood by your battery. Now, we installed one on this Chevy, and we do have a video showing the installation on our website. Now, specifically in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Kurt's custom fit base plate kit with removable arms on the Chevy. This is the very starting point of flat towing. This is the part, like I said, that we actually install on the truck. Now, the Kurt kit installs um, right where your factory tow hooks are on either side. Uh, let's take a look at the operation of it. How easy is it to use? We'll get the braking system out of the way. Now, your safety cables are included with the base plate kit. These arms are removable. The pins come with the kit as well. So to unhook, it's that easy. There is no crossbar. These are direct connect right to your truck. If you want to remove the arms, they twist out. And so you're left with a clean factory look here. And you can work your way across. You can go around town wherever you need to go. If it's time to flat toe again and hook back up, these go back in. That easy. Depending on your type of tow bar, installation is pretty painless to get back on the Chevy. So this is awful nice if it's raining outside, which it usually is if I'm flat towing. This is a quick, easy method. Um, I like the fact that it removes off of the truck for a clean look when you're not using it. It has plugs, um, so if you're not using it, you can plug up the, the holes on the base plate itself to keep dirt and moisture from entering in there and causing you future problems. Now, something like this, as far as installation goes, on some of these trucks, it can get pretty involved. This one here, we didn't have to remove the bumper or anything, but we did have to remove the tow hooks, and we found a few uh, tips uh, from underneath it made it a little bit easier for us to install these. Now there's some limited room and you might need some special tools, but if you want to see how to install this base plate on our 23 Chevy, stick around and we'll show you. Now to begin our installation, uh, we're going to be coming under the truck. We're going to be removing our factory tow hooks here. Now side note, uh, General Motors has been waxing their frames from the factory. You're probably going to want to get some gloves. Uh, it looks like grease, but it's just wax and it's going to get everywhere. We'll come up underneath, and you're gonna have a factory splash guard here. We removed it earlier just for filming purposes, and we really realized that by doing this, you have a lot more room to work. It's only four bolts that holds it up. And once you remove it, you can see it's wide open under here. So um, it's not in the instructions, but I would say do yourself a favor and just remove the four bolts that hold this up. Um, give yourself some more working room. So we're gonna start under the truck. This is the driver's side over here, and the passenger side uh, works pretty much the same way. We're gonna be removing this bolt and this bolt. We're gonna loosen this bolt. Um, so all of these right now are 18 millimeter. This one, hold your bumper on. 
We're just gonna loosen it though. And there's other bolts that hold your bumper on, so don't worry about anything coming too loose. We're just gonna make room for us later on. We're gonna need to get under here. Now these two bolts actually hold the tow loop. This bottom one's gonna be a shorter bolt. And then that upper one runs all the way through. So you may need an 18 millimeter wrench. Ratchet wrench will definitely help in this situation. So this bolt will come out of there. We did find that at least on the driver's side, we had to remove that. It has such a large washer on it. So we'll pull that out and then we can thread this back on here. Now, with these two bolts, that's all that's holding your tow hook on on the front. Now our next steps are actually going to be trimming the fascia here for the base plate and the safety chain plate. Um, now there's a few things you need to consider on this truck where we don't have fog lights and this is a Z71 package. I want to show you real quick. We did the passenger side first so you can kind of see what we need to cut. We had to cut down here, over, and then up to allow for the uh, base plate tab to fit and the plate. So keep that in mind when you're trimming the front of this. Just do a little bit at a time. Now today I'm going to be using an oscillating tool to cut this. Now this is just plastic. Um, you could cut it with a razor knife if you're careful or any other, anything else that you're comfortable with. Now we're back up under the truck on the driver's side. We're going to be using the two holes that the factory provided here. Um, the problem is we need to drill on the other side of this hole. So in order to get a template up here, we're going to use the base plate itself. This is the hardware that comes in your kit. So right now, temporarily, we're going to run this through. You may have to lift up on your bumper tab here to get that to line up. So this bolts all the way through. And this bolt, we're going to line up the back pin here. And then I've got a right angle drill. I'm going to drill from the other side. I'm going to drill a pilot hole. And we'll probably end up using a step bit. Um, there's not a whole lot of room over here. Um, if you have a very long half inch drill bit, then you can go straight through from this side. Our problem was the chuck was hitting this. So this is going to be a thing where um, you're going to have to do whatever works best for you. Now that we've got where the pilot hole has marked the frame, we're going to remove this base plate, get it out of our way and get this hole drilled. We can test fit the bolt. So that's gonna work for us. This isn't the only way to do this, but this is probably gonna be the best way on the Chevy. There's just not a whole lot of working room. Of course, you're gonna get two of these big hex bolts. You're also gonna get some locking flange nuts. And then the washers that you're gonna get have teeth on one side. So the teeth of the washers need to go towards the threads on the bolt. So make sure you put the smooth side against the head and teeth towards the threads. Now the safety chain plate is going to have a curve on it. This curve goes towards the inside of the truck. So on this side it goes this way, the other side is going to flip over. So your tabs will be up on top. This is the driver's side one. These are side specific so make sure you have the right one. Now just a quick side note. Um, the instructions don't call for any type of thread sealant and in this instance um, you know we have locking fasteners but just for a little bit of extra security I do recommend using blue Loctite now we have it here at e-trailer but this is something you can pick up at um, big box stores or auto parts stores as well and if you're already down here doing the work I highly recommend this they're gonna have two different colors blue and red red is more permanent and may require heat to remove so the blue is gonna be the best bet for this 
and get our base plate up into position. This is probably where you're going to wish you had more hands than you have, but send that through. I'm going to line up the first bolt. And you may have to lift up again on this, uh, on your bumper mount here to get that one in. We'll do the same thing to the second side. Again, you may have to wiggle your base plate up and down to find the right. One side through. So once you get both bolts in and the flange nuts on, you can torque this hardware to the specs that you're going to find in your installation manual. Now, just a side note, uh, all of the uh, hardware that came off the factory hardware was 18 millimeter. This new hardware, both sides, is going to be 19 millimeter. Now, once you get both of these bolts torqued while you're under here with your sockets, you might as well reinstall this bumper beam bolt. Now, in your kit, you're going to get two quick links and two safety cables. Um, these are in the event of one of the failures of the hardware that we just installed. Now, one of these needs to be installed on each side. If you look in your frame, you've got a big hole that runs all the way through, and we're going to tie off right here. So we can just bring the cable through, and attach the quick link. And then if you have some zip ties, you can zip tie the loose end of this cable up out of the way and I like to zip tie um, these components right here together to keep them from rattling when you go down the road. Once you have everything secured to your liking underneath, uh, don't forget to reinstall your splash pan uh, that you may or may not have taken off. But other than that, that's going to complete today's look at some of the features and the installation of Kurt's custom base plate kit with removable arms on our 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 1500.